I've been making games for almost three years now, and here is my journey so far. The year is 2018, and 12 year old me was sitting at my mom's computer creating a Discord server for me and my friends to hang out in. Now back then, I didn't have much experience with Discord, and still don't. And I thought that I needed the Discord server to have one of those bots that ran the server. Now looking back, I don't think I even realized what a Discord bot was. I just thought that it was a necessity if you wanted to run a server. So I headed to Google and looked up how to make a Discord bot and started reading articles. Three days later and I had absolutely nothing to show for my work. All I remember was feeling really discouraged because no matter what article I read or YouTube video I watched, I couldn't get anything working. At one point I tried following a coding tutorial using Atom and let's just say it was a pretty sad sight. However, seeing people code stuff had ignited a spark in my brain and I decided that I would make it my mission to learn how to code. So I decided to start with Python since it's the language that I saw being used in some of the Discord bot tutorials. So I confidently installed the interpreter, however I quickly quit, not because I didn't know how to write Python code, but because I didn't know how to open up the IDE. So I scrapped Python and went back to YouTube and looked up how to code. And one of the first tutorials I came across was a 4 hour tutorial for C++. This is it, I said to myself. I played the video, followed all the steps and set up the interpreter. About 40 minutes after I started the tutorial, one of my friends came to my house. And it just so happened that this friend knew Python thanks to a computer science course he was taking. When we went over to the computer, he noticed that I was following a C++ tutorial. Have you tried Python? He asked me. Yes, I said. I installed it, but I couldn't work out how to use it. Luckily, my friend took pity on me and proceeded to teach me the basics of how to use Python. And from that second he started, I was hooked. So I scrapped C++ and decided that I was going to become the best Python programmer the world had ever seen. That didn't really happen. After a few more days of learning, YouTube recommended me a video by Sentet, who's, who's a really awesome YouTuber who I still watch to this day, and he makes some really awesome videos, so I would 100% go sub to him. The video was titled Game Development in Python 3 with Pygame, an introduction. Now at this point I hadn't even really considered making games as an option. I wrote that off as something that only people with university degrees could do. So seeing this video completely changed my perspective. I immediately clicked and quickly became obsessed. I followed every tutorial in the video and at the end had a small game which I was proud of. Now I think it's pretty important to mention at this point that I was still a complete noob and 90% of the time I had no idea what the code I was writing was actually doing. However, looking back, I think this is one of the reasons that I learned so quickly. Instead of taking the usual route of starting out by buying a beginner's course on Udemy or watching a beginner's YouTube tutorial, I jumped straight into the deep end and started developing games. Now some people might say, bruh, that's a pretty dumb idea. However, this actually made me learn faster in my opinion. And after many times reading through the code I had written, I slowly began to work out things for myself. The reason I believe this helped me is because I was figuring things out myself, which meant I remembered it better, rather than just learning something from a tutorial and then most likely forgetting about it. So by this time, I had finished the tutorial series and the YouTube algorithm had concluded that I liked game dev and started recommending me more videos about the topic. I quickly discovered the Unity game engine, which apparently allowed you to make games faster. Now, to be honest, I was a little skeptical because at this point I had already became attached to Python and Pygame. So with the help of my friend that I mentioned earlier, we decided to team up and make a game in Pygame. The game was called Cow Clicker, a game with a simple premise. You're a cow and you click. <laughs> okay, in all seriousness, I don't remember what the point of the game was. All I remember was that making it was a complete blast. We spent a day straight working on it and even filmed a mini documentary about the development. Fast forward a little bit and I'm at school telling another one of my friends about how I learned to code. And then he had a bright idea. Let's make a video game, he suggested. And I thought that was a great idea since this friend was good at making art and so far that had been my biggest downfall. So over the course of a few weeks we had tried to develop a game called Alien Escape. A game about an alien who's trying to escape an evil facility. And it was at that point that I made one of my first mistakes. I decided to switch to Unity. And just as I had learned how to make games in Pygame, I skipped all of the basic tutorials and went straight to developing this massive open world game. Spoiler alert, 
Alien Escape didn't get very far into development before we both agreed that it was time to move on. Fast forward a little bit, and me and my friend had decided to give it another attempt. At this point, I had taken a step back and familiarized myself with Unity and its all of its mechanics. So, not learning by my mistakes, we decided to make a procedurally generated open world survival game inspired by Terraria. We worked on a game for a few months, and not gonna lie, things were going smoothly. At this point, I had been seeing some other creators on YouTube create these things called devlogs. So, me and my friend decided that if we were going to make the next Minecraft, we were also going to have to start making devlogs. So, I opened the Scriptline Studios YouTube channel and got to work. And when I say got to work, I mean record some footage of the game, slap it into iMovie, add some generic music, and boom, video. Unfortunately, despite the hours of time I had put in into this video, it didn't really take off. Not getting discouraged, me and my friend continued to work on the game, and a few weeks later, I released Devlog 2. This time, I had actually put some effort into creating the thumbnail, since I had heard that cool thumbnails were important. The video didn't do great, However, to my delight, a few people had actually commented leaving suggestions. This motivated me and we continued to work on the game at a rapid rate with no signs of slowing down. Until disaster struck. Suddenly bugs started appearing everywhere and the bad decisions I had made in the code when I started the project really began to show. Not only that, but my lack of experience making games with Unity was really starting to show as I suffered for many days trying to create the game's save load system and other features. Progress suddenly came to a stop and me and my friend took a step back and realized that the game wasn't fun and it wasn't going to be worth finishing. So Untitled Survival Game was sent to the trash can. Third time's the charm, right? Fast forward another few months and I had made a quick prototype in Unity for a golfing game and it was actually quite fun to play. So I took this game to my friend and was like, hey, want to make art for my golfing game? And he said yes. So Golfing Adventures was born. And spoiler alert, unlike our other two projects, Golfing Adventures was actually completed. I think the reason for this was because coming into the development, we had a solid plan. We would work on the game for a maximum of three months, release it on Google Play, and become the next big mobile game. <laughs> spoiler alert, that last part didn't happen. Anyways, for the next few months, finishing the game was our main focus. I worked very hard creating levels and coding out new features, and after a few months, the game was complete. Now, I was extremely proud of my creation at this point, and remember how excited I was going to school and, and setting up my friend's phone with a playable build of the game. Now, it was time to tackle the last part of the challenge, uploading the game to the Play Store. So, I paid the fee and started getting my page set up. However, despite a few hiccups and setbacks, getting the game to Google Play was actually a pretty easy experience, and in December of 2019, I released Golfing Adventures to the world with very little attention and downloads. Despite friends, family and a few people I got to try out the game from Reddit, it didn't exactly do well. So following up Golfing Adventures, I made two more mobile games, all of which performed equally as badly. And it would be bad of me to complain about making these games since I got such great experience from making them. However, looking back now, I can't help but cringe at some of the things I did. And if I were to make another mobile game now, I think I could do a much better job. Another thing to note is that while this whole mobile game dev thing was going on, I was also working on making PC games. And in December 2020, I released Stickman Brawl, an intense fighting game where two stickmen fought against each other. I remember being really proud of this game, and when I launched it, I was ecstatic to see a few people had actually seen the game on itch.io and tried it out. So fast forward once again, I have released a couple more games, including one that me and my friends made in a day, and realized that I had been neglecting my YouTube channel. So I fixed that with a video called How to Upload a Game to itch.io, Easy Tutorial, which for some reason people really liked, and the video to this day is the most watched video on my channel despite the fact that the video was garbage. Hey guys, welcome to the first tutorial on my channel. I started pumping out more videos, including one called How to Make Particles in Pi Game in Under 10 Minutes, with the video being over 10 minutes, of course. And shortly after that, I posted Devlog Zero for my new game called Gundash. I followed that up with three more get devlogs, and on the 4th of August 2020, I released the game. To my surprise, the game did quite well compared to my other stuff, and is currently sitting at over 100 downloads, which is more than anything I had got ever gotten before. Making that game taught me a lot of stuff, one of which being the fact that I really preferred working with Python and Pygame over Unity. 
and making stuff in Pygame gave me a lot more satisfaction than making stuff in Unity did. So excited by the success of Gundash, I immediately started working on my dream survival game, Magnite. Despite my love for Pygame, I decided to choose Unity again for this project, which is a decision that I am regretting now and currently in the process of gathering up enough courage to move the entirety of the project over to Pygame, which is going to be a massive task. Along with developing this game, I also put many hours into making devlogs, which gained some popularity and I would say have been the main source of my channel's growth. And that pretty much brings us to today. I think it's pretty safe to say that the last three years have completely changed my life and I can't thank you guys enough for watching my videos and playing my games. You also have to remember that game dev and YouTube is not my full time job and I still go to school and I'm usually busy doing activities related to school rather than game dev and I could probably make another whole video talking about how I fit in all this game dev stuff into my school schedule. Anyways, the script is almost five pages long now and I think I've rambled on long enough. I hope you enjoyed this video, if you did, please consider liking and subscribing as it really helps out the channel and this video has taken a very long time to make. Anyways guys, keep making games and I'll see you all next time.